Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Monday. Three games for us to take a look at tonight. couple of teams looking to close out their opponents. The Celtics and the Sixers looking to close out their opponents. And then we have a um, series tied between the Jazz and the Mavs heading into Game 5. Let's go ahead and get started. As always, if you enjoy the videos, appreciate it. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Check out all the socials down below, the website, Twitter for updates. I'll have a prize picks video out right after this. If you wanted to play that, you take a look at that one. And let's get started with the point guard picks. So Luka Doncic is back. The first game, they said he was going to be on a minutes limit. He ended up playing 34 minutes. So it wasn't severely limited at all. It was a close game. They lost at the last second dunk. Well, it wasn't last second, but they lost with that dunk by Gobert with like 11 seconds to go. He played well, shot the ball pretty well from missing you know, a couple of weeks. So I definitely don't mind going to Luka Doncic. We have the Brooklyn Nets, and still no Ben Simmons, as he said he woke up with a sore back yesterday, so he doesn't want to play. Uh, so that means Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, are they going to have to do whatever they can to keep their season alive? You know, all these guys are playing 40 minutes. Kyrie, uh, during Ramadan, still playing all these minutes. He's kind of caught up to in the last couple of games. He hasn't really shot the ball too well. Their defense is super solid. In last game, he was dealing with foul trouble, but it didn't really limit his minutes. He just... Hasn't hit a three in two games in a row, and that's something you don't see out of Kyrie Irving. Expect him to bounce back. The price tag on him has gone down, which is nice to see. He went from 10-2 to 99 to 96, down to 93. I'll take a shot on Kyrie, at least having another good game to extend the series, potentially. I do like Kyrie more than James Harden for just $100 more. And then Fred Van Fleet left the game. He did not return. It's questionable, so uh, this is a big deal. If he's out, then you're going to be looking more heavily at the Raptors' Other starters, and they are, you might see like Malachi Flynn jump into the starting lineup. He would be a great value if there is no Fred Van Fleet. So keep an eye on that news. 6K range, I definitely like Maxi. He didn't have great games on the road in Toronto, but still playing monstrous minutes. Uh, he not like he had a bad game, but just other te other teammates kind of stepped up. But he's going back at home in Philly, where he put up like 100 fantasy points in the two games. I think he looks like a good guy to go back to, especially if he's not going to get too much love today, which. Don't expect him to. Uh, Value-wise at the position, you know, I'll go right back to Jordan Clarkson at 47. The price tag only moved up by a couple of hundred dollars. Like I said, heading into last game, they should be looking to get him more minutes, and they ended up giving him 36 minutes with how well he was playing. Uh, they should be looking at more and more minutes with how much Dallas likes to play guys that just shoot a lot of threes. Seems like a good matchup. No reason to have a lot of bigs out there uh, at the four. So uh, they can definitely go small, run a three-guard lineup against this Dallas team. So... Real like Clarkson at 47, he does give you a lot of upside just because he can get red hot from three. Over at shooting guard, I like getting to Donovan Mitchell if I can at 88. He looks a little bit better to me than James Harden just in terms of being a little bit more consistent. Uh, you have Jalen Brown at 82. He's also done very well this series. It's been Tatum as kind of uh, headlined, but uh, Brown has been right there and putting up some good games right below Jason Tatum. We got some good value down here with, like, Gary Trent, especially if there's no Fred Van Fleet. But even if Van Fleet plays, Trent is looking at huge minutes, like 40 minutes for these guys. And back-to-back you know, -back 24 point scoring outputs. He gets you a couple of peripherals. He's a pretty good defensive player. He can get you some steals, averaging 1.7 steals on the season. And with this price tag, he's probably one of my favorite Raptors, uh, him and Scotty Barnes. I think expect Scotty Barnes to be back in the starting lineup today after they brought him off the bench. He didn't really shoot the ball well. One of six, played 26 minutes, but uh, he should be in the starting lineup today. And the price tag on him has gone down, so we're getting a nice price for a guy that does a little bit of everything, especially with rebounding, scoring, and he can get you a handful of assists as well, especially uh, if Van Fleet sits. We've seen Scotty Barnes you know, be the de facto point guard at times this year. Value at the position or the mid-range, you can definitely go Bruce Brown. He's been like the Brooklyn Nets' best player this series, which is pretty crazy. Uh, this, the fact that... Uh, KD and Kyrie haven't really shown up very often, uh, but we've seen Bruce Brown. He shot 53%, 67, 67, only three shots in that game, but uh, shooting the ball at another level. He wasn't known to be this good of a shooter, but on the season, 41% from distance, definitely making his shots, and he's playing good defense out there as well. So no problem going to Bruce Brown and value. You have Seth Curry playing good minutes, but he's not really doing great for fantasy. Still at a good price tag to where you can take a shot. And then same thing with Danny Green. I don't mind getting to him. They're back at home, so Thibault will be back. But uh, still looking at probably like 30 minutes or so from Danny Green as long as he's playing somewhat well. 
Moving on to power forward. Payups at the top end are Durant at 10K. He hasn't dropped more than like 40 fantasy points. Or actually even dropped 40 yet in this series. Uh, just only 11 shots last game. I mean, he got to be more aggressive than that. I don't care if he's getting like, double teamed. He still has to look for a shot. Uh, hopefully he does that today. But even so, I, you, know, you can go definitely go to Tatum for 500 less. These, like, Siakam looks good if there's no Van Fleet. Uh, I definitely don't mind getting to Tobias Harris here at 68. He's been super consistent for the Sixers, getting you a lot of rebounds, playing good minutes, big minutes, and just knocking down his shots when he's open. Uh, a lot to like with Tobias. He's even giving me some blocks recently, playing, like I mentioned, big minutes. And he's done well against Toronto this all eight games, you know, averaging about 37, which is pretty solid for a $6,800 price tag. Value at the position, Scotty Barnes at 6000 Further than that, maybe take a shot on Royce O'Neal just because he plays a lot of minutes, but he's not that fun. I'd rather go up to Clarkson instead. Over at center, probably a spot where you can go with the value if you're not looking to get up to Embiid. Embiid dealing with that torn thumb ligament. He's still going to play through it. So at least you have some guys that in the league that are willing to play through some pain. Siakam at 9,000 looks good as well. I don't mind getting to Gobert, but we've seen like Nick Claxton get more and more minutes here. I don't know how many minutes he'll get Robert Williams in the second game. He didn't play very much in the first one. But Claxton, you know, Drummond isn't getting a ton of minutes and uh, it's getting ripped by the announcers last game for not getting the rebounds and just tapping it right to the opponent. Uh, but Claxton, the free throw is a big concern here. So, uh, I mean, hopefully he can hit s some shots, but 52% free throw line. He's looking at dunks, basically. It's what he can do, get you some rebounds. 46, I'll take a shot at that price tag. You know, I don't have much interest in Tice now. Maybe a Chua if he's starting and there is no Van Fleet. He looks better. Uh, but I, I would go with Claxton over Drummond now. And I don't have much confidence in the minutes for Robert Williams. So we still got a good amount of money left to spend going over to the guard spot. Uh, lots of options to pick from. Uh, if I was going with a mid-range or like an expensive guy, I would go up to Donovan Mitchell here. 88. Uh, he's been him and Clarkson. Hopefully they can do a lot of the scoring for the team. And Mitchell's been... Playing big minutes, and he's getting his teammates involved as well. He's gotten, you know, a averaging about six assists this series. Uh, exactly six assists and, you know, a good amount of rebounds as well in a couple of these games. Taking a lot of shots still. Still hasn't had, like, one of those big high-scoring outputs. But, you know, this game should be close. One of the closest, uh, I mean, the Brooklyn Nets game has, like, a one-point spread. But this one also has a pretty close spread, the second one. So that's what I got. It leaves you with about 5,000 left for the last two spots. Uh, let's go ahead and touch on FanDuel. All right, over here on FanDuel, Luka Doncic, most expensive point guard pick. No surprise there. Like the price tag on Kyrie on both sides, 93 and 94 respectively. Uh, he's 500 more than Donovan Mitchell. You can play Mitchell at shooting guard. Both of these guys can play. So don't mind getting to either one of those guys. Value, Tyrese Maxey at 64. Marcus Smart at 6,000. I still like Jordan Clarkson at 52. Uh, he's played better than Conley except for that one game where Conley played well. But Clarkson... Has shot the ball pretty well this series. Now, if he continues to get the minutes like he did last game, I think he has a lot to I mean a lot to like at that price tag. And then value, maybe Seth Curry at 44 just because he gets the minutes and the Flynn if he's starting. Over at shooting guard, I like getting to Donovan Mitchell here at 89. Look to get up to both of these guys. I can put up north of 30, north of 40. You know, Bruce Brown is tough to get to on Fanduel at that price tag, 78. Much rather get to Tyrese Maxey, Gary Trent, Marcus Smart, Clarkson. They all stand out. Value, Danny Green at 39 looks pretty appealing. And then we saw Pritchard have a good game off the bench, but he's just not playing enough minutes uh, for me to trust him. But if you play tournaments, you can throw him in a few percent of your lineups. Small forward Tatum is now more expensive than Durant, which I, makes sense how they played the series. Not for the whole season, though. Uh, so I would uh, go with Durant at home over Tatum. Further down here, Tobias, 71. Just don't mind that price tag. I like getting to Jalen Brown. But we have these three Toronto guys right here. All three are of great price tags. Uh, Gary Trent, Scotty Barnes, and Anobi can easily get to two out of those three. And that's probably what I will try to do. I don't think I'll get to all three, but I'm um, trying to get to at least two of them. And then value, it's Danny Green and Royce O'Neal as the guys that give you the most upside. Well, Danny Green gives you upside in terms of minutes. Maybe not in terms of just like production. Power forward. You have Embiid is also cheaper than Tatum, so I would prefer Embiid. Uh, I do like Siakam at only 87. Tobias looks good, but still think you can get to one of these two. Scotty Barnes or Ananobi. Uh, both look pretty solid. 
you know, Scotty Barnes is starting. I think I like him a little bit more than Ananobi just because he gets you rebounds. He's also going to take a good amount of shots, and he can handle the ball a bit and get you assists. Ananobi is going to be scoring a little bit more I mean, looking to shoot more. You know, the rebounds can die off a bit if Siakam and Barnes are gobbling them down. He's not going to get you very many assists. And then value, you have Claxton, but they've kind of priced him up to 53. You might go to Horford instead or go to Bogdanovich at 57. And then over at center, I like Siakam 87. If you don't want to go to too many Toronto guys, you know, I don't mind getting to Gobert here at 72. I like him a little bit more than like Horford and Claxton. I think Horford might make some sense there, but uh, still, they might up the minutes on Williams. That could have hurt Horford a little bit. Whereas Gobert, you know, he's going to play a lot of minutes. Just hopefully he can hit some free throws and uh, get you some. He's definitely going to need your rebounds, and hopefully with Mitchell after that winner last game, they look to him more at the basket and getting some more lobs. Uh, but that's about it for the FanDuel picks. Yeah, that's about it for the video as well. Thank you for watching. Best of luck. Stay tuned for the prize fix video if you're going to be playing that. And I'll see you all next time.